All right, so the parts of the arm, basically where we're gonna go down now, this is gonna be your clavicle. How do I know which end is which? The nice flat end right here is gonna bump up right really nice against the sternum is gonna be the sternal end, whereas this more fan-shaped one is gonna be the acromial end. So that's it, clavicle, sternal end, acromial end. That's good, put that back. Moving on to the scapula, the scapula sits in your body. This is gonna touch the rib cage, this can be facing outward. So this is gonna be the spine of the scapula here. The acromion, the acromion process comes off the spine of the scapula. Whereas the coracoid is gonna be this other weird little broken finger nub that sticks off kind of next to this glenoid cavity, the fossa. So again, spine, acromion, coracoid process, glenoid, fossa. There's a couple of other fossas you need to know. So you need to know the supraspinatus, which is going to be here. So supraspinatus fossa is here, or sp supraspinous, super, sorry, supraspinous fossa. Whereas this is going to be the infraspinous fossa here. And then underneath, because the word for under is sub, it's going to be the subscapular fossa here. So those are going to be your fossas. That's it for your scapula. Moving on, this is a humerus. Uh, the head of the humerus is going to be the ball. So this is going to be your head of your humerus here. And depending on if you're talking about the anatomical neck or the surgical neck, these are going to be the necks basically of the humerus here and here. Uh, if we look a little bit further down, we got the condyles. How do I know medial from lateral? Remember, the head of the humerus is always going to be medial because that's going to go into the glenoid fossa of your scapula. So this is going to be your medial epicondyle here, lateral epicondyle out here. The capitulum is right next to the lateral epicondyle, so it's going to be this guy right here. So the capitulum is here, or is this thing that looks kind of like an hourglass, these two pieces put together is going to be the trochlea, kind of like an hourglass here. If we flip it over and look at the back side of the humerus, it's got an indentation right here, which is going to be called your olecranon fossa. And if we grab our ulna, this is the olecranon process of the ulna. It actually goes into the olecranon fossa, so it makes sense. Humerus is done. So again, this is the ulna. looks kind of like an ice cream scoop or a wrench. The olecranon is going to be this part. The, um, sorry, the olecranon, the coronoid process is going to be this part. So you got your olecranon process, coronoid process here. And then remember the word for styloid. Styloid just means a pointy little nub. So you can see at the bottom of our ulna, we have a little pointy nub called the styloid process here. The other one is going to be the radius. So the only parts you need to know on the radius are going to be the tuber, uh, tuberosity and the styloid process. Again, styloid process means a pointy little nub, so it's going to be here. And then the radial tuberosity is just going to be this big lump that sticks out up here next to the head of the radius. All right, so now we're into the carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. So the carpals, you might think carpal tunnel, so you think of your wrist. So these are going to be your carpal bones. You have your proximal row, which is going to be here. Proximal meaning closer to the point of attachment to the body. So this is your proximal row here, and this is going to be your distal row of carpals here. The bones that make up the back of your hand, or I guess the palm of your hand, are going to be called metacarpals. So you have one, two, three, four, and five metacarpals. Then after that, we call them phalanges. If you're talking about the fingers, the fingers have a proximal, middle, and then a distal phalange. Whereas the thumb, as you can see, only has a proximal and a distal phalange there. So that's it for the okay. hand. So this is going to be your coxal bone, or oscoxa, or and nominate bone, whatever you want to call it. First thing I want you to do is figure out how it sits inside of your body. So remember, this is going to be the pubic bone, so it's going to be the pointy end, whereas the rougher kind of big end is going to be your butt bone, your ischium. So your pubic bone has to go towards the front, ischium goes towards the back, and the cup, the acetabulum, has to face outwards so that the head of the femur can actually sit in it, like so. Okay, so we need to sit like this. So this little pubic bone, or the pubic bone, sorry, coxal bone, sits in me just like this. So we have to find the spine. If we know it sits like this, we know this is the anterior side, this is the posterior side. So you can see that there's two points in the front and there's two points in the back. So this is going to be your anterior superior iliac spine. This is going to be your anterior inferior iliac spine. Whereas in the back, it's going to be the posterior superior iliac spine, posterior inferior iliac spine. The iliac crest is going to be this whole top part here. When you put your hand on your hip, you put your hand on your iliac crest. That's good. And if we look here, there's a big notch in the bone. This is going to be your greater sciatic notch where your sciatic nerve comes through right here. Uh, moving on into the pubic bone, we said the pubic bone is in the front, so it's going to be this guy right here. This basically this whole little chunk of bone from my fingers forward. So pubic bone is here. A couple of things, the obturator foramen. Remember, foramen means a big hole, so this is your obturator foramen. Your superior ramus. Ramus means like a branch or an arm, so it's going to be this piece right here that connects your pubic bone to your ilium bone, superior ramus. Whereas the inferior ramus is going to connect your pubic bone to your ischium bone, so it's going to be this guy down here. Uh, the pubic symphysis you have to see on Herbert or George. So he's going to be this piece of fibrocartilage that connects the two pubic bones together. So this is the pubic symphysis here. Moving along, moving into the ischium. So we have a couple of things here. So we have the ischial ramus, which remember, ramus is a branch. It connects basically the ischium to the ilium. So it's going to be this whole region of bone right here, just ischial ramus here. And then we said this is the greater sciatic notch here. But you can see underneath it, there's a smaller one. This can be your lesser sciatic notch right here. Last but not least is your acetabulum, which is going to be this cup 
that the head of the femur sits in. So put that bone onto the femur. So femur, we know that this is going to be a left femur because the head has to go into the body, so it has to go on the left side. Sounds good. This is the head. The neck is going to be where the head attaches, right here. You have a greater trochanter, which is this big lump of bone I'm pinching right now with my fingers here. And then a lesser trochanter is going to be this little nub down here. We move down, we know that the head, or the head of the femur is on the medial side, which means that this has to be the medial side of the lower part of the bone. So this is going to be your medial condyle. So this is going to be this whole little kind of roller skate looking thing is the medial condyle. Whereas on the other side is going to be the lateral condyle. Again, it looks kind of like a roller skate. So medial towards the middle, head side, laterals over here. If we flip it over, look at the back side of the leg. Between the two condyles, we have an intercondylar fossa or intercondylar notch. You can call it either one. And then we look back at the front side, this nice flat surface is going to be where your patella or kneecap sits. So your kneecap is going to sit right here on the patellar surface. That's going to be it for the femur. Patella, again, it's just this bone here. It's your kneecap. Moving down further down the, the leg, this is going to be the tibia. And next to it is going to sit the fibula. So he's going to sit over here. So here's your tibia. What are the parts that we need to know on tibia? We need to know medial versus lateral. Easiest way to tell that this is, I know this is a right tibia. How do I know that? Look for this thing on the bottom. This is the inside of your ankle bone. So this is going to be your medial malleolus. So this means that this is the medial side, which means it has to be a right tibia. So medial malleolus, which means that this is my medial condyle right here. So we have a medial condyle here. Lateral condyle is going to be over here. Medial malleolus is here. And then in the front, if you actually feel right below where your kneecap sits, there's a little ridge of bone, a little like nub on the front of your shin. That's going to be your uh, tibial tuberosity, which is just this kind of raised up bump on the tibia. It's done. Fibula. If we look here, fibulas are a little bit tough sometimes, so you kind of have to, have to take a little, like, a little extra time to look. But basically what you want to do is have the part that has kind of like a pointy nub, that's the top. So this is going to be the head of your fibula. So if it kind of has like a little pointy top, whereas this is kind of just kind of flattened out down on the bottom, this is going to be the head. So this is the head of my fibula, whereas down here where it's kind of flat, this is going to be the lateral malleola. So this is the outside of your ankle bone here. That's it for fibula. Moving into the foot. So tarsal bones, tarsal mean ankle bones. Uh, there's seven of them, so all seven of these ankle bones here. Um, the only ones you need to know are the calcaneus and the talus, which is great because they're the biggest ones. Your calcaneus bone is this huge bone right here. It's your heel bone. So when you're standing on your heels, you're standing on your calcaneus. The next biggest one right here is the talus. So the talus is this next largest of the two uh, ankle bones. So calcaneus, talus, and then you don't need to know the rest of these five, which is great for you guys. Um, what you do need to know is metatarsals. So the metatarsals are these big, long parts. They make up most of your foot. So basically, your metatarsals are most of the foot, and then these last parts are going to be just your little toesies. So you've got your five metatarsals there, and then you get your phalanges. Again, a proximal, a middle, and then a distal. Because remember, your four, your little toe is bent twice, two different spots. Proximal, middle, distal. Whereas your big toe, only two bones, so only a proximal and a distal. And that is it.